Control and Soft Destruction. Now, obviously, in the previous map that we just saw these guys come to, only one diffuser hit the floor at any point outside of being dropped by those who got dropped. But only one diffuser got planted. So do you think we're going to see a similar kind of thing on this map? Do you on think water? On um, water? Yeah, <laughs> I, think, um, I think we're not going to see that just as much just because... A border is much, much easier to get a plant down. But it's going to depend on if Mirror makes it through the ban phase or not yet again. You can see Impulses with the first ban is going to ban out the Blitz yet again. So clearly not a fan of that at all. The attacker ban is going to come through from boot camp. Probably going to be a Lion again, I would imagine. No, it's actually going to be the Ying. Ying, pretty powerful on border. is a pretty common ban. I remember the young Rising Star Super plays a decent amount of Ying on border. Or he did when he was back in Elephant Gang. So... Yeah, he does pretty well with that. He showed how devastating Ying can be on border, so we're going to see that ban coming through from the defense. However, boot camp should really look to ban the mirror here. So yeah, I would be amazed if they let mirror go through on these first five defense, and obviously they do not. It would be too powerful to hand them all on their initial setup, and it would give them too much of an insurmountable. Because if you've got mirror on border and you don't pull those five defensive rounds, uh, I think it says a lot. And Clash is the other one removed, keeping up with her 100% ban rate. Lion is allowed. The first time this season that we've seen a Lion, we've had four game, well, this is the fourth game we've had so far in Season 2. And uh, yeah, this is the very first time we've seen a Lion. So he does not have 100% ban rate instantly on the board they're picked by does if you have a lion no don't waste it armory lockers and archives and expected first defense maestro dr luton jaeger and smoke they're going to try and hold it against the the force that is a lion buck combination definitely lion pretty gonna be pretty terrifying to play against here for the defense but uh hopefully can get their equal share when they do come through onto the attack Let's see how it goes down. As Bootcamp Gaming will start on the attack. Uh, we'll see Armory Lockers as the first defense coming out here for Immortals. Uh, how do you think this is going to go down? How do you think this is going to play out? Well, Immortals really kind of came into their own in the previous map when they were on their defensive rounds. Now, obviously, it was only 3-2 at the half, which Attackers is the closest it can be. Defense. And you could argue that uh, Bootcamp kept on taking them to this. But well, they lost all of their ones on the same point. So whether that was Bootcamp's decision-making that kind of cost them there because it was obvious that the models were struggling on other attacks. However, their defense was pretty well, minus a couple of hiccups in the center. They were pretty solid on defense. It looked like they were more together, so you would expect them the same to be on uh, the board. You would kind of expect them to lock off, I would say, at least four of their defense rounds. However, Obviously, yeah, last time, we camp won this. Won we, this. Also, we also had a mirror last time as we well. And that is definitely going to three. change a lot of the strategy here. Interesting that we've got a Rook Attackers and Doc being brought here from Immortals, which suggests them to be pretty aggressive in their strategy here. And as we said with Liquid, kind of a peak everything kind of strategy, which worked out pretty well for Liquid, honestly. Definitely did. You can already see you set up, and we saw you get a pretty beautiful kill. Uh, through the Oregon door, so they have, they're fearless, I think is a good way of setting up the tap. Again, just detected, they know they've rotated in there, you can see a lion hanging around on the door, and as you said, obviously, mirror was banned, so the defense won't be an easy, and the attackers have lion this time, and lion is, well, lion has petitions written about it, that's all you really need to say, the first E1D goes off, as they start to put pressure from the east balcony into offices, Maestro gets dropped as well as Jaeger. It was the two of them get dropped. They do get a return frag against Lion though, so there's no more E1Ds for this round, which is a very big take. Potentially worth it, honestly. No E1Ds gone down already. They've lost a decent amount of control, but they have the line off the board. That's something they definitely have to worry about, and they still have decent operators on the board still, but not anymore, because all the way from 91 will go down. Ball takes it down with a headshot, and it's going to be a 2v4 situation now. Not looking too good for Immortals, but they still have a decent chance of bringing this in because they still have control of the site, and they're still wasting time, but that time is starting to take down. Leech and Mizar are going to go out from Yuk, getting very aggressive with it, completely unnecessary, and... 
Howl who's going to take him down. What a shot from PX. Does manage to take one down. And the constant crowd speaking is going to come out. PX is going to try and heal himself here. As he's desperately going to try and reload well in mini. So what he can do here. Just spraying his life down on the half wall. What? <laughs> what a <laughs> shot from PX. The hitfire headshot wall bang onto the attack. And another one. PX takes down M King and turns into a 1v1. How did the docs do this? It's incredible. PX is left in a 1v1 situation here. It's between him and Boar. He's just going to overstim himself and just move all the way in. Doesn't have a huge amount of bullets left. He's going to push all the way through into archives to see what he can do. He's trying to see exactly where Boar has gone and escaped himself to. Won't realize he's in the fountain. We'll push all the way through, but that dog overhealing saves him. And he wins the round. Beautiful from PX. A 3v1 into a 1v0. That was a hell of a clutch from the dock there. Unbelievable. Stuck in maybe one of the tightest places you can be stuck in. And that hip fire headshot wall bang. My god. Unbelievable clutch there. What just happened? I don't know, but I love that it happened. Five. Aced as well. Aced as well. The first ace of the entire tournament so far. And it is on a diffuser down clutch. And he's not picking Doc again. Unless he's six picks. But man, that was unbelievable. He's uh, he's already shown what he needs to do on Doc. Yeah, well, that's the thing. The whole highlight reel is right there. Right, Lion, Thermite, Zephyr, Buck... And Thatcher are going to try and take Vent and Workshop. We'll see if there's any sick picks. Obviously, as you said, they went with Doc and Rook last time doing some very aggressive peeking. And most of those didn't go so great. But it didn't matter when one of them clutches the entire round. But it seems like they're generally kind of waiting, locking in. Oh, there's the change. And it is PX himself changing to Echo. Which is obviously, hey, Echo's a beast. Echo's a monster. I, I'm honestly still... In <laughs> I can, I can flash tell. from that round. I can that was tell. Absolutely <laughs> crazy. There was honestly no reason why he could should have won that. I mean, it was a 3v1. They had him locked down from three different angles, and he still won the fight. He's still got a hip fire. He's got two hip fire kills right at the end. Like, how do you do that? He went into the diffuser room with his back to the watcher as well, and still pulled off the frag. Was overhealed, but. There was so much time for him to rotate and get the swing. It was just... Hey, they kind of... Not, not to say nothing taken away from it. He got that ace, but that shouldn't have been as easy as it was at the end there. Definitely. We'll go through it now into round number two. PX with a beautiful performance there. We will see a ventilation workshop defense coming out here from Immortals. Let's see how it goes down. Uh, obviously, last time, their defense upstairs wasn't really that impressive they did take the line off the board very early on and that's probably the most notable part about that that trading out for a lion that early on is honestly worth it for two defenders going off the board especially two defenders that didn't really bring too much to the table when they're alive jaeger and maestro so we'll see if they can try and pull or something like off this time again because if these eu1ds go out and the push starts looking at the lineup especially when there's a book involved it's not going to end well for Immortals, I don't think. No, we saw that. And obviously, it was just, it looked like it was on the other side. It was on the CCTV side that the push from the Lion himself happened. But there he goes again. First one taken off the board. Cyber with a very important pick there. And that's just the sigh of relief that hits you. Palu manages to take care of PX. And that's a big take. Palu with the double getting one as well as you finds intact. And it opens up the sightline to below, but it's going to rotate. Yeah, and Palu with a triple. Nova sitting inside point. Zafir, please. Yeah, Palu who's just making his way into the site. Takes down the smoke, Echo, and now the Maestro. What? Ball with the double kill all the way from 90. Just piece all the way around. Boot camp take round number two. Just frag out. See, their problem was that they planted the defusal last time. They did, yeah. It does not play into their playstyle. How dare they? Plant the diffuser, but why were they stacked up like that at the end? They had the rotation possibilities. They had so many places they could go, and they both went the same way. Not that that was an easy take, but it was easier than it should have been again. But maybe I'll be saying that a few times. We're going back to Vent Room this time. Obviously, the first two picks in that was the Lion, 
straight off the board. And then the Echo closely followed. So if there's two operators you don't really want to lose first. Yeah, no, definitely. It is going to be going interestingly for them as we move into round number three. You see Boar is actually going to be playing on the line this time. Clearly, they do not trust Duds anymore on the Lion roll, as uh, he has suffered a number of casualties. Yeah, he's he's generally bit the bullet enough, and I think they've said we need to change what we're doing here a little bit. They have the well triple soft destruction. There's a fierce sledge and buck, as well as the thermite. They've got nothing to really take care of any bandits, but at the same time, they don't need Attack to. They've need to for the first time not really bought anything. Bomb. Stop. Echo has been instantly shelved as well. They're going to go back to more familiar grounds and they're bringing Pulse instead. PX again flexing, rotating between operators, and kind of showing off what they need to show off. Yeah, they are going to do so indeed. Let's see how we just go through it. Let's see yet another ventilation room and workshop defense. Really, this was pretty much all Paolo. I mean, he had drones ahead of him, and he was drone into the site, but just really good game sense coming out from him. Great aim as well. I mean, Novis almost caught him out here as well. So that's important to realize that he didn't almost just get away with it for free. It wasn't easy for him to do things like that. But yeah, he did do it. He did get that 3k entry, and that is really what turned them around. The Hopefully, the lion stays alive for longer than 30 seconds this time. As we move into round number three and see exactly how it's going to go down, we see a full shotgun. It was the fact as well. That's the second time we've seen that high-speed Zephyr get inside. Obviously, we saw an Demis Ridder earlier and see Palu do it again. I didn't even realize he was that deep into the map. Novus takes care of Duds and kind of glad, I guess, that they swapped the Lion off of that roll. That is Sledge taken care of. Palu again with Yuke. He is already finding frags and he runs up metal stairs. He is wasting no time again. Taking care of those drop downs. PX is playing deep into point this time, feeding information. Worried about the vertical control there. All the doors being open. Novus has suffered a fair chunk of damage as well. Peeking out from that bathroom, trying to lure people into that vicious ACOG that can tear through most attackers in a fair fight to fight. But it's the, probably weirdly the slowest this guy, these guys have got against each other so far. Cyber so going to try and find some quick gunfights here, but not going to be successful. And yeah, as you said, some really early fries coming up from Palu yet again has really pushed them into a pretty good advantage so far. Let's see if they manage to keep it up with, as finally the first E1 D charge will go out from boot camp as they try and make their way into the side. But Novice doesn't let it happen. Palu goes down. That is a beautiful kill coming out from Novice there. And I should just go out onto the side of Metal. How does that not kill the Thermite of M King? As one just come around, but what a shot from one with the SMG 11. Takes the head clean off of M King. Novus with the kill onto intact as well. Does turn it into a 1v4, all into the lion. Still has one E, one D charge left, and it is ready to go. Also had three flashbangs as well, so could move in here very, very nicely and go for a quick solo push. You can he's waiting for someone to rotate around. He definitely did hear someone as it's one minute left remaining on the clock. He will activate the E1 D charge and try and push in. Now, this is his opportunity to make a kill here and make it happen, but he's not going to see the smoke just yet. 45 seconds left to go. The rotate does come through from Cyber, but can't find the kill. 40 seconds left to go on the clock bore. He's going to come through into the Teller's area. Flashbands are going to go out. 31 bullets in the magazine. He's going to try and push through from Tellers into the bathroom hallway. That's just what he can do. It's still a 1v3, however, so more flashbangs are going to come through. 25 seconds left to go on the clock. He doesn't have the time. They know exactly where he is because he's giving his position away. He's waiting for the peaks to come round, but they're just not going to. They have no reason to peek just yet. The proof has come through from Boy. He's convinced someone's in the bathroom, but it's going to be Novis, who's not in the bathroom, but he is indeed in the workshop. He's just taken down. Beautiful entry kills coming out from Palu, but we're able to make it work. Oh. And uh, great, another great defense coming out from Immortals. Yeah, no, they, they've started to kind of solidify, obviously, the one that they lost previously on the exact same point. Didn't go too great for them. They kind of struggled to put it together. They they were being called out. Obviously, Palu got two points so exceptionally fast. And then the double upstairs as well, where they were stacked. They just seemed a little bit disjointed on their original hold of that. Whereas that time, obviously, they had enough people left to even just throw them down. 
towards the end there. Uh, and Lion, again, obviously it seems like the right decision putting him on Boar. He's still an operator that you can keep bringing in. Boar is surviving. Duds is being picked off pretty much every time before he can start to actually make a dent on the map. I don't know if he's actually successfully got into the map yet. I haven't really seen. He just needs to spawn in. Just give him a couple of rounds. He just needs to spawn. He's unfortunate. Um, yeah, but it is right. That the line has been let through the ban phase for the very first time. But it's just not being utilized at all. We haven't really seen any effective lion pushes come out. The only round that boot camp have actually managed to win was when the lion died right at the start anyway. So we really aren't seeing E1Ds using effectively. We've seen one E1D charge used across three rounds and they didn't pick up any kills from it. So really disappointing to see coming out from boot camp. They've been given the opportunity of a lifetime of having a lion for the first time on attack and they've just not used it. And I feel like immortals are really going to punish them, not just while they're defending. Once they come through onto the attack, they're going to have a much better job of it. That's exactly the way of looking at it. Obviously, every round they win on the defense is a round that they've got Lion on the attack. And when a team works together as tightly as those guys can, as you said so succinctly, they're just not utilizing it, those unbelievable globals. They're not pushing alongside. They attempted it once out of the couple of times. They managed to get one of those EUs off. And they got picked off. It was the Maestro dug into Bath, I believe, in the previous round. Just managed to swing around and take the shot. You can see Palu's watching those east stairs. Worried about someone pushing up. But it's always a good thing to cover because that balcony can become a monster. M King, what? however. M King just jumps into the officer's area and gets a double headshot. That's a frag if I've ever seen one. Palu finds another one of his own. Pushes all the way into the officer's area and finds a 2K. What? How does that happen? And now it's all into the hands of one all of a sudden. E1D is going to be used effectively. Inside just runs all the way in. Boot camp take round number four. What? <laughs> so, uh, sorry. My apologies. Thermite is now an entry fragger. Yeah, Thermite's an entry fragger. And I don't know if it was just brilliant comedic timing, but they finished the first four frags on the two hard entrants from Thermite, Fragmite, and then Palu. And then the E1D went off for that final hunt. Yeah. And I thought that was beautiful, brilliant timing there from the comedy genius that is Lion and those E1Ds. But Palu, a ah, hell of a game he's having so far. I, I just don't understand why the Thermite was the first one to jump in there <laughs> when they knew there was people holding up an office. And if they didn't know that, I mean, I just, yeah. Well, I mean, it worked. So we're going to move past it quickly. And it's going to be 2-2. As Paul, who's actually going to change around to the Thermite. He's recognized that Thermite is now yeah. the entry frag. And he's he gone. Wants entry frag. Well, hang on. I'll, I'm going to do that. I want to yeah. frag. I want to entry frag. Give me Thermite. And I'm sure Goga is somewhere watching and very excited about seeing his uh, his frag might get run this hard. Right. Sledge. Yet again, let's see if Sledge can make an impact on this map. Buck and Thermite E1D exactly. for their Deloitte final the attack the round. Can they go into this slightly better than they did the previous one? Obviously, it was 3-2 against them, 2-2 Immortals last time. Getting that one extra round and then having to sit through those E1D attacks, you, you want that. There's no two ways about that. You, you want that buffer. I just I still don't think that Lion's being used effectively. As you said, like four kills came through and then the E1D charge went off, kind of hilariously. But yeah, I think maybe... Here's my explanation, is that this team is not used to having a lion and they're so miscoordinated with him because they're so not used to actually having him in the lineup. They're not used to having call, okay, now lion, now yeah. we're going to push. Uh, they just push because they see someone and they call them out. Um, so yeah, like maybe that's happening. I'm hoping that Immortals on their attacks use lion a little bit more effectively. But yeah, so far we haven't really seen really any... Well, we've seen one frag go down while the E1D is off. Yep. Yeah. And but that, speaking of it, Lion Charge is already going to go out. Wow, this is a rush. That's what effective Lion usage looks like. M King and Insect to get a first entry kills already taking control of Armory. Already the fuse is going down, but there's still an Echo Drone on the board here. It should be able to deny the fuse. What? Yuck, with a beautiful shot. Just take down Bot. Instantly traded out, however, by Duds. And it's a 2v4. Not looking too good. Entry frags are trying to be found here, but does does take down Novis as well. 
And not looking too good here for one to try and bring it in. It's a 1v3. In fact, of course, injured and bleeding out near half wall. And a constant info coming out. Nades are going to come out, but not going to find his target just yet. But Palu on that entry frag of Fragmite is going to find the kill onto one. And a beautiful job there from Bootcamp this time to use the E1D insanely effectively. And move all the way into Armory and get the kills and get the plant. Wow, we have already seen the planter go down double the amount of times in the, in the previous map at two. It's gone down twice, but the speed and the finesse of that attack. We finally saw it twin with an E1D. There was just nothing. And originally I was going to say, because we were watching a defender, I was like, oh, they're pinging it straight away. They're probably going to try and catch. And then we swapped to the attackers. No, they were already in the point. They were already in armory. They picked up a frag at that point. So it was nice to see it used. How will it be used by Immortals? Are they going to go for something similar? I doubt they're going to go that fast on the first round. That would be very expected. But it'll be interesting to see how they develop. On the same time, if we look at the Armory Locker's archives defense, Maestro, Echo, and Valk. That's a lot of camera potential and a lot of information gathering potential to feed against those brilliant room clear from Immortals we've seen before. There is a lot of info coming out here for boot camp, but there is a lot of lying coming out here for Immortals. And, um, I'm really putting all my hope now on Immortals being able to bring back in their attacks in effectively utilizing the line in a way that is reminiscent of how Bootcamp just did. Yeah, you want it to work together. Lion is, yeah, I mean, arguments, uh, Twitter rants, uh, calling on the public to vote for things aside. Lion's ability is utilized when you move with Lion's ability. Yeah, it can spot people anywhere on the map, but if you combine that with a push that we know, especially Ladam is capable of, you could destroy most people and most teams and most setups. And we kind of saw it there. MKing going for very aggressive peaks there from MKing. Going again, trying to find a second. Well, wow. yeah, he just aggressively peeks out and headshots the Ash from an absolute mile away using the Maestro. And put some barbed wire outside as well, just to make sure people know he's not afraid of going outside. Pal, you're going to be peeking around onto the east stairs. We see lots of pushes coming through from the line who's on the front lines when he really shouldn't be. Default cam is going to go down on 90 as Pal, who peeks it out, but the E1D charge does go off, but M King shuts the push down. One is out of it and looks like beautiful shots coming out here, but Immortals do start to bring it back. Nades are going to come out, but there's still so much utility on the board here from Bootcamp. I mean, M King is injured, but he's not down just yet. Intact does nice to peek it out. Oh, and a beautiful peek coming out from Paolo. Takes down Cyber and leaves it all into the hands of PX. Can't find a frag. Intact takes it down. That's the flawless round from Bootcamp on the defense, completely shutting down that push. That was exceptional. You saw at the end of it a lot of the Bootcamp players had taken damage. A lot of them were quite injured. Immortals just could not lock off those firefights. And when you're in a region where firefights are often the make or break, as we always say, the amount of the times the diffuser doesn't go down is, you know, very common. Uh, if you can't lock off those firefights, that's what happens. They have five operators left. It doesn't matter if that operator's on 10 health. It's still their win. It's still their go. Bathroom Tellers we go to. Vigil being bought this time as well. Capital, Ash, Buck, Thermite, and Lion. So currently no Maestro. So. Currently no Maestro, but I wouldn't be too surprised if Maestro gets six pick. but it's not actually going to be. It's going to be Castle. You get six pick from the Vigil. No six pick coming out from the attack, it looks like. As we are going to see the Lion being brought yet again. I think as soon as Lion doesn't get banned, he has an almost 100% pick rate. Yeah, it would be nonsense to not bring the advantage that is Lion. And don't get me wrong, Lion isn't a tick to win. We've seen that Lion isn't a tick to win, but he is a big help in getting that tick. He is just a force to be reckoned with. I will say it's interesting. I think this is one of the first times we haven't seen a single ACOG on the defense. I could be wrong about that. Um, It's definitely up there. We have seen quite a lot of ACOGs on defense recently, but we will see how it goes down. As we move to round number seven, we're going to see Boot Camp Gaming with a defense of the downstairs ventilation and workshop. Um, so this defense tends to be more about a top heavy. 
than anything else. I honestly thought without a mirror, this is going to be much harder. But we haven't really seen that. No, that's the thing. Obviously, they haven't got a mirror. They've got a lion. This is all the makings of attackers storming in, at least looking like they're in more control. Palu, please, takes care of Yuke as he approaches the building. And that is the E1Ds off the table. Lion, he's allowed to run out once, but he is being hunted. The predator becomes the prey, it would seem, as it'd be the lion going down so early on. Cyber going to make his way through his armory lock as well, getting drawn in by PX and 1. Has been effectively in here and does find the first frag for him. Morsels this round as does does go down. There's a beautiful bit of entry dragon, but that's only the Jaeger off the board. It's not a huge utility pick, but it is a pick nonetheless, and it has even the score went out to a 4v4. But it's intact, who still has control of the archives area, so. Not complete upstairs control as Cyber will actually get downed here. And Nitro is going to come out from Palu. And another Nitro going to be coming out as well from Intact. But neither are going to connect. And we're going to have any shots coming down just yet. As Cyber does get revived and he's going to try and back out. But they really need this upstairs control if they really want to take this site. And just about halfway to the round now, it's not looking too good. We see also Boar on the castle is going to be roaming upstairs as well. Oh, I see. I think we were just saying, we were making the point before it became so aggressive this round and before we got those unexpected picks that you would just assume that the attackers would be in a little bit more control. Not even saying that they would be winning rounds, but just having a bit more control over the map. And I think neither team has really looked solid on their attack against the defenders. Despite the fact there being no mirror and having a lion available, no, they definitely have not. We'll see a 4v4 situation developing as we move into the final minute of the round. We do still see Buck upstairs. There's more and more control going into the favor of Immortals now as they start to slowly push through into the archives. PX gets the entry kill into Boar, but Palu going to answer it right back as another kill for PX. And that's upstairs control now fully achieved. But it's going to be the Valkyrie Palu who just managed to push onto the east stairs, just get droned out. However, he's going to try and push back. And it's actually Bathroom Teller's defense, I didn't even realize there because most people for boot camp is actually being played more aggressively ran into you as servers yeah it was a they kept that vertical control which to be fair you would say if there was a map where vert was so important and it's important on every map but on border especially the normal go-to is straightforward and king gets cyber in a double as he takes down one as well flipping the table with only 10 seconds left px has to pull out something magical here. I don't even think has the time to do it. He's going to peek out. He's going to hit the elbow, but MK with the team kill. <laughs> oh no, Paul, you're going to go down. Bootcamp take round number seven, though, and a very nice defense and a great shot coming off from MK, especially. But that line going down so early on from Palu just potentially won them the round there. 5 2. 5 2, we find ourselves in, and that is. Four rounds in a row, or five rounds in a row for boot camp at this point. What can Immortals do to try to change this momentum? What can they do to try to flip this switch? We'll see how it goes down. Um, it just, again, it seems so weird that attackers are not finding more rounds here. Really where you'd think they were, but uh, clearly something is going wrong here communication-wise. I, I again want to bring up my point that Lion is very rarely used in Latin America Pro League and we see him banned constantly. So it may just come down to a bit of rustiness with Lion. Yeah, for sure. well, it's definitely showing Palu is having an explosive game. It's going to bring Cav to try to emphasize that again. Everyone is out here making show reels. So we'll see whether Lion can finally make a mark on this map or... If he's had his claws removed. Now, Smoke Castle, Jaeger, and Maestro back on the board as well to try to get a bit more control. You would expect them generally. I mean, it's hard to tell boot camp what they're doing wrong. They're doing pretty much everything so right. They're getting a little bit loose with some of the trades, but apart from that, they're always there, ready to pick up those return frags, ready to pick up those rotations as well. 
You'll see Palu again. He's taking complete control of this map. He seems to be everywhere. To, to the point where I believe he got a frag, and in the job to try to clean him up afterwards and get the return frag, they actually got a different member of boot camp instead. And then Palu went on to get another two frags. So, you said it yourself. Watch Palu this map. He is destroying this border. He has been destroying this border. I'll see how it does go down as just one round away from boot camp to take us to a decider map, but it, it can still very easily be in overtime, and I'm still very surprised that we haven't seen a more attacker-sided map so far. Pal, you're going to be on the Caviera for the very first time as he just pushed around onto the red hole. Doesn't push east stairs just yet and tries to return just a little bit. I'm kind of surprised we're seeing a Cav here on border. I really do not think this is a map to have Cav on. Especially when there hasn't been a huge amount of Jackal. I mean, okay, there's Jackal now, but in the past, we haven't seen a huge amount of Jackal coming out. No, that's for sure. And obviously, Cav Shield works best when she has a lot of room and a lot of roots and a lot of rotation. And you don't really get that. There's only two major staircases. There's external rotation, sure, but they're long and they're often kind of troublesome. There's the first trade, though. It just keeps going. You gets dropped by Palu upstairs. Cyber gets M King as well. Dud's taking care of Cyber though. Back and forth between these guys. There's PX picking off Dud's. And yet again, this is the strongest they've looked. One is currently down, I believe, but that has not stopped boot camp before being one man down. Yeah, Palu is going to make a little bit of a kill hole here for himself. One is actually injured still. No one being able to pick him up just yet. I'm surprised when we're actually not even that far into the round, just getting into the second half yeah, now. And we are going to see finally one is going to get revived. And Immortals do return to a little bit more of a kind of fine strategy trying to move in here. They still got the Caviera to deal with, however, and this could be pretty devastating to them if they're not careful about it. But it's going to be Boar who doesn't have to be careful. He peeks out, he takes down the Thermos, the only hard breach you've gone, Palu from the other side onto the bottom of Metal. Does take down Novi and leaves it all squarely into the hands of PX, who's done great things for Immortals before. Can he keep it going? He's going to push through onto Waiting Room, see what he can do, just see if he can get a frag. But Palu's going to return back upstairs and go for a little bit of a flank. And that Jackal track is not going to be affected by Caviera, unfortunately. SPX is slowly pushing into the bathroom, is aware that someone is flanking him, but no, <laughs> Palu is going to be there from Customs. Does take him down. It's going to be good halves coming through as Bootcamp Gaming take round number, uh, round number nine and the map 62. Round number. Yeah. Round so, number eight, sorry. Round, no, I, I'll get there eventually. No, it's all right. We've seen some very big games and the first play day, obviously, it was a 2 0 and a 2 0. And this is us going to that decider map again. Map three, Palu 14 to 3. You absolute monster rotated through so many different operators there and brought all of them to the forefront. That was some exceptional play, exceptional rank clear. And that was a boot camp that you were kind of missing in the first map. Definitely. We are going to take a bit of a break here for commercials before we get back with our third and final map of tonight of Clubhouse. We'll be right back. Stick around. 